The Adventurer 3 is back. Two years back, I gave this printer to a good friend and his son, and they told me they've been using this for probably every single week. They had a lot of fun using it. This printer, it works nice, but we need something bigger. So what would you recommend? And I was like, okay, we could do some kind of an exchange. Maybe it was a big mistake. So I gave them one of my built out completely with all the bells and whistles and the threes that you've probably seen on my channel before. But I did it because I wanted to test this printer in 2022 and see if it's still a good choice for beginners. And to be honest, they started with this printer. They didn't know nothing about 3D printing. What I will do now today, I will have a look at this printer if it's still working. So this printer in 2022, who has a new firmware. It has also different slicing software than back in the days when I first reviewed this device. And we'll have a look at all of that and see if it's still a good choice in 2022 and 2023 maybe. So we wanna start printing right away with this printer, but anyways, I'm going to clean the print surface with alcohol because I think removing any finger grease is a huge factor of success when you start printing with these kind of devices. Some people say that you could add some glue stick or print spray to make things stick better to the surface, but I think it's actually sticking pretty well. So let's head over to the computer and fire up flash print to slice a banshee and then we're sending this over to the printer. What we're gonna do now is adding a model file to this print surface. I'm starting with the 3D banshee. And oh, we need to repair it. That's a surprise. I never had to repair the banshee actually. And that's how it looks on the print surface. We can then start slicing it. Uh, what we have to select here is nozzle size, which is 0.4 millimeter, that's the default. We are using PLA and don't care so much about the type of PLA. There is probably other brands here, but I'm selecting the default. We are going for a fast print and a standard layer height of 0.3, just to make it a little bit faster. I don't wanna wait forever, slice it. And then we can slice preview this uh, print, how it looks like on the print surface. That looks fine. And I would say this is taking 58 minutes. That's pretty long. I think 58 minutes sounds pretty long if you've been using the Bamboo Lab X1, like doing a Banshee in 17 minutes. Um, the only thing that I realized that this printer has only space for small spools. Standard spools with one kilogram of filament don't fit in this housing, so I need to figure out how to do this. I actually had something printed for my friend here, which is like an extension where you could just add a spool and have it here. <sighs> This is all I have here. I think this is going to be our filament spool holder. <laughs> this looks pretty nice. Yeah, that sounds good. And that uh, looks like it's working, it's starting up. So you hear the fan noise. This printer was actually never advertised to be very silent. And when it starts printing, you will hear that it makes noise. But the point of the housing is also not to make it silent. It's more like to keep a constant temperature. So how do we get started with the filament? We have a filament loading menu, which we just hit one button. It heats up the nozzle and it prompts us to insert the filament. Okay, so we're prompted to insert the filament. We can then just push it in hit OK, and then it's loading the filament. At some point, we're gonna see it coming out of the nozzle here. There we go. And purple or pink is coming out of the nozzle, so let's hit OK to confirm this. So we're done loading the filament. Now let's start the print from flash print. Here in flash print, we had already sliced the model. We just have to hit send to printer. Here's our printer. So we can go and send it. And it should be starting. Actually showing a little preview of the model here in the print menu, which is pretty neat. And then it starts printing. I 
actually the noise level of this printer isn't as loud as I thought it would be or as I remembered it from the last time. It's actually quite okay. Even if I shut the door, it's probably going to be a little bit less noisy. But still, I wouldn't put this in my bedroom for different reasons. But from an end of free or a similar printer comparison, this is still pretty loud. So it turns out removing the print from the print bed isn't as easy because it's very sticky and I forgot to turn off the raft, bend it a bit, getting things off, then it's much easier. However, for getting the raft or turning off the raft, there is an additional yeah, piece of plastic here that we have to throw away. Let's have a closer look at this Benchy now to see the print quality in detail. So what problems do we have here? First of all, we have some heat creep problems here at the bottom. So there's a huge elephant foot here and that means probably the build plate was too hot while printing. That could be solved by reducing the bed temperature. Um, actually probably for PLA we wouldn't actually need a heated bed. In the upper layers we have little layer shift problems obviously. I think that is really hard to define where these are coming from and also probably hard to get rid of. This might be just my printer, but it also might be just a general problem with this printer. I would say for a 0.3 millimeter layer height, still it is quite acceptable quality. So this isn't the best print quality that I've seen so far on a printer, but it is also not the worst. Some of you might say, especially the ones of you that are more experienced with other printers, that they give you much better results than this printer here and they might be cheaper. And I totally agree that this is possible. However, I see the target user for this device is probably also a different one. It's for beginners who don't want to tinker, who don't want to think too much about technology. And at the price point of $300, $50 or euro, this is probably just a sweet spot where you get a lot of features while this is not the perfect device of course, but it has for example a feature that other printers don't have out of the box. It is internet connectivity, so you can connect this to your Wi-Fi. It even has an Ethernet port that the Adventure 4, so the newer model and the bigger one, does not have anymore, so they saved some money there. This is something that other printers don't have by default and that's why they are much cheaper, but this is coming out of the box with this printer. And I would say for beginners, this might just be the right thing. And then after two years, like my friend that had this for two years now, uh, they are now using an Ender 3. They are advancing and making some progress and thinking about designing their own 3D models now. So I think that was the right step for them now to go for a more advanced, but also more like technology-wise complicated setup. If you have a chance to get this printer used or if you can get discounted, that's something you can start with and then probably another printer after a while makes sense. If you're interested to use this printer with another slicer program than FlashPrint, I have made Cura and Prusa slicer profiles for this printer. My patrons can get access to this and also all newsletter subscribers. So check out the links in the description box of this video, subscribe to my newsletter, and I will send you a link to the profiles for Cura and Prusa Slicer. So you can use FlashPrint, but some people prefer using the same software for all of their printers, for example, Cura, and that's where you can get them by subscribing or becoming a patron. I hope this was helpful and whether you make the decision to get this printer or another printer you can might check out some of my other videos where i review different printers on my channel and i see you in the next video thanks for watching bye